I was just uh, just talking about heading into uh, another weekend. Or Roberts, a uh, pretty strong historical team. Just kind of talk about your team heading into the weekend. Yeah. Well, you know, we the Pensacola trip was uh, was a challenge for us, and then coming and playing uh, back home at Plainsman Park against a really good, you know, undefeated Georgia Tech team who will, will return the trip next Tuesday. But um, you know, we feel like we've been in every baseball game. We feel like our pitching staff has grown, you know, since the beginning of the season and. You know, we picked a four-day span there not to swing the bats the way we probably had played prior to those four games. So, and we've had two days of practice here on Wednesday and Thursday to go back to the to the short-term drawing boards and, and simplify and get, get our stroke back and talk about our approach of what made us successful, you know, those first eight or nine games and uh, trying to come back out and do that. Or Roberts just got a, uh, you know, it's a traditional program. They've won their league so many times. They've been in the league that they've uh, dominated historically. Um, they go all over the country and play some of the top competition prior to going into their conference. So we appreciate them making the trip to the Plains and look forward to our series. What do you, how do you see your kids responding? I just, I think I still see them connected. I think I still see them uh, uh, working. I think they believe in our coaching staff as I do. Uh, Coach Sisson, uh, you know, working with our guys, Coach Bohannon. Um, Coach Dry has done an unbelievable job. You talk about, uh, I think, you know, if every pitcher was standing in my place right now, that they would talk about the work over the last couple of weeks of uh, him helping them navigate and calling some of the games for them. Um, I, I think our coaches, this is an opportunity for our coaches to lead. And uh, as long as our players stay connected with us and keep working, and, you know, we've been patient, we've been positive. Um, we're winning our culture war every day with our guys. And as long as they do that, I'll stand here before you time and time again. and. You know, back in these guys, and, and that's where we're at right now. So we got a ton of season. Uh, we're looking forward to, you know, it's near that Texas A&M comes to start our Southeastern Conference. So it, it feels like it puts a little more urgency of like, who are we defining that? You know, I, I remember talking about that before the season started. And, um, you know, that's something you wish you could snap your fingers and create your identity. And it's uh, taken us a little bit longer to do that. Um, so hopefully we're closer to doing that with another weekend series. In regards to your approach at the plate, what do you guys need to do a little bit better? Uh, finding a pitch to hit uh, in a nutshell. And I know that sounds so simple, but I think as our guys, if I say our guys have lacked a little bit of confidence, what I mean is they've just went up there and swung at a pitcher's pitch or any pitch. It looks like they swung at some pitches out of the hands at the game as the game has went on. So we, our, our bats have been better early in the games. and to me, deteriorated as the game went on. And I think that's because they care. I think they're trying to force the issue. They're not necessarily just trying to be a hero, but they're just trying to do something for the team. And that, that that's away from an approach. You know, we just, you know, until we get down in the count, it's just like get a pitch to hit. I don't care if no runners are on, one runner, or 20 runners are on base, you're not responsible for him. You are responsible for getting a pitch to hit. And that's what we've not done a good job of recently. And then two strikes. Can it be more competitive? We want to build our offensive approach around being uh, as competitive as anybody in college baseball with a two-strike approach. That's easier said than done. And I don't feel like we put our head in there with two strikes recently. And we, we have before. You know, be willing to take your single the other way when you get down two strikes. So I, I, it's very simple. But the commitment to that, for whatever reason, um, you know, not being able to take BP or being in a routine for three. You can come up with a ton of excuses, but getting a good pitch to hit. When you're hitting, you're responsible for getting a good pitch to hit. When you're base running, you're responsible for running the bases properly. And when you're on defense, you're responsible for your defensive responsibilities. When you're hitting, you're not responsible for the base runner or how many on or anything. And just continuing to try to get that point. These two days of practice allow us to get back to some basics. You, you guys haven't been walked a lot. Is, is, is part of that because of maybe swing, swinging too early at some of those pitches that, are, that aren't hitters' pitches? I agree. Maybe so. Maybe so. Our, we're at our best when we're really working pitches. We're, we're seeing the, the pitcher's marbles, uh, not scared to get to two strikes. So if you're not comfortable with your two-strike approach, sometimes you, you pull off right. an early swing. Uh, to not get to that point. We, we want to try to create comfort from the end of that bat working back forward. Um, now, I got no problem with somebody swinging on an OO pitch if they got their pitch. So we're constantly just trying to learn what we're trying to do. And, and, and Doug's doing a good job. I'm over his shoulder yesterday and 
you know, as he's talking to our guys. Our guys are shaking their head. They're connected. They understand. And, uh, you know, we're just in a process of trying to get back to something that we were doing a good job of. Talk about your pitching, which probably has been better than a lot of people would have expected going into the season. Well, you know, at least, uh, you know, we'll do the same thing we did last week with Justin Camp on Friday, Casey Mize on Saturday, and uh, Cole. You know, all the guys had pretty quality starts and got deep into the ball game. So we didn't want to, you know, play with the deal too much and start shuffling them up. And you know, they had pitched so much, you want them to have the complete rest going into this weekend. So we'll go the same way. Justin, you just feel like he's Justin Camp is just going to compete every pitch, whether he's having success, whether somebody's scoring, or whether he's putting up, you know, four scoreless innings. You feel like he's not giving a pitch away. I think a team responds and respects that. Casey is just young, exciting, <laughs> talented, uh, growing like crazy, and you think he's got a bright future. And I thought he did an unbelievable job. His first starts on the road against a really solid ball club to get to the seventh inning. And he had a little bit of adversity. He had one guy in the lineup that, that saw the ball pretty good and hit him hard, and he went nowhere. He did a good job of the running game, fielding his position, throwing secondary pitches in for strikes, and just did a phenomenal job. And then I thought that was the best outing I'd seen from Cole since I've been the head coach at Auburn, just seeing him get in a game situation and see him break hitters down. And Slider did a good job of bending hitters over, and getting them off balance, and I could see what he's trying to do. Uh, much like the game he threw against us last year at Mississippi State. And then, you know, Andrew Mitchell had worked into the fourth or fifth inning uh, on Tuesday night of throwing 15 scoreless innings. How he's grown has been um, really neat to us. Um, and then we're still trying to figure out the bullpen pieces. Gabe Klobis, it's, uh could have pouted, went away, um, whatever. Uh, but he, he, he took a route of, like, give me the ball, give me an opportunity. How can I help our club? And, you know, two of his three bullpen outings have been successful. Um, so I, we're growing from that stance. You don't want that to go away. We want to keep doing that. But the guys have done a good job on the mound. Speaking of Andrew, do, do you see him getting more involved in the weekend situation? Yeah, maybe. I, you know, but you're going back and playing arguably still an undefeated ball club next Tuesday. Um, do, do you put him right back out there against them? Um, but I think we have our hands full with Oral Roberts this weekend, and you want to try to win every game you can and and adjust. But uh, I think moving forward as you get into the league, I think that's definitely open for debate. I think right now we've got Oral Roberts for three, and you're probably preparing Andrew to get back for that start at Georgia Tech. Um, because, again, he, he was another guy that hit the century mark because we've had so many – you know, pretty good starts. You would like for him to get a little, be a little more efficient and get a little deeper right. in the ball game, but it's kind of hard to bounce him back on short rest right now. So we're, we're, we're trying to win the war, so to speak, getting ready for down the road instead of the, you know, the, the daily skirmish. Is there um, anybody who maybe hasn't got a lot of at bats so far that might get a longer look this weekend? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we're looking close at like a JJ Schaefer. Uh, you feel like a uh, Burr Green. Uh, you know, got him in there some over the weekend, got him back in there Tuesday. He's getting some at-bats. Uh, ben Kraft is a guy that, you know, is week to week, has kind of really swings it for a while. I uh, think he got in. He's another one. Uh, but, but Schaefer, what he can do uh, defensively, his speed, um, his head's really been connected to the barrel and has had really good practice this week. Uh, Schaefer, when you ask the question, Schaefer's probably the, the next guy on deck this week currently that's uh, – done a great job that we think can, can help us and potentially may be in there this weekend. Who would he who would he replace? I don't know. He could play outfield or he could even be a DH candidate, I think, just because of the speed, uh, you know, his ability to get on. You know, uh, you know Robert and, and, um, and Gray are guys we're waiting to, to get going here. Uh, but, you know, he could kind of serve that role in a DH much like Gray's done because of the speed. And if he's swinging it better and has a chance to get on base, you could see that. But... That's not a, a knock or, or a lack of patience that we've talked about with Gray and Robert, but, but JJ's had that good a week. Thanks. Yep.